legendary instrumental hip-hop artist DJ Shadow is back with the album Our Pathetic Age. DJ Shadow is just one of those artists where everyone can pretty much agree. Introducing is fantastic and unfortunately the rest of his discography has kind of been overshadowed. But that one album is amazing. I cannot pick out many flaws, or any flaws in fact, for that album. Uh, every time I listen to it I think it's not going to be as good as the last time. And it always is as good as the last time, it, it just always is. But Our Pathetic Age was set up to be an album that I was not anticipating at all because it's a double album. The length is ridiculous. The length is just ridiculous. 90 minutes. Come on. What makes it worse is that one disc is just instrumental tracks and then the second disc is loaded with all kinds of different features, mostly rap features, but you do get Samuel T. Herring on this album, not doing his Hemlock Ernst rapping persona, but just his usual singing uh, stuff that he does for Future Islands. And the entire first disc, in my opinion, could just be uh, thrown away. Like, I just don't really get anything out of any of the tracks. Like, any of the tracks on that first disc, I, I just I just would throw away. I, I don't get the purpose of them. They're really not exciting or interesting at all. But the important thing to point out about this entire double album is that it does have a very obvious theme running throughout it. Um, you can probably guess even just by looking at the album cover, which is a bit cheap and tacky, to be honest. But... We, of course, have an album critiquing the current state of the world at the moment. Generally, the social media aspect of the world, the internet, that kind of thing. And before you say, OK, Boomer, I think it's pretty safe to say that there are many aspects of social media and the internet that are worth critiquing. Like, I don't need to list off some of the atrocities that have happened through you know, people uh, using the internet, you know, hacking into bank accounts, for example, or like, you know, child pornography, things like that, obviously, uh, have, have become an issue um, through the usage of internet. And I could list off many other, more, many other things too that y y I don't need to list off, really. Addiction, the fact that people catfish, that kind of stuff, just all kinds of problems. Um, we faced through social media so like yeah of course it's worth critiquing of course there are things to say bad about it but every time every time without fail every single time an artist incorporates that into their music or a musician attempts to make a statement attacking social media or the current state of the world because everyone's addicted to the internet and stuff like that it's it comes across as like the most corniest out of touch just the worst i just don't know what it is i don't know what it is i don't know how we 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 seem to fail at this every damn time i think it honestly peaked at arcade fire's last album i don't think it's ever gonna um find a way to get better than that because that is just one band who have proven themselves to be very good for many years and then they dropped that album which was just atrocious and now DJ Shadow is attempting to throw his chips on the table getting involved in this game and kind of botching it up once again but somehow botching it up musically more so than anything else because as I've already said that first disc is useless it's not an interesting or engaging ambient uh, spacey instrumental piece like it is just so dull it just starts off so ridiculously slow the first few tracks, I just forget immediately once they're done. A track like Juggernaut comes through and just sounds like a mess. The beat on that thing is completely hacked, to be honest. The corny, my name is Juggernaut things that keep coming through. It's just a complete botch of a track. Rosie has this very odd structure to it with the vocals and stuff. And then you go into the second half where it transitions so strangely into something that just feels completely aimless and pointless. If I Die Today has a great instrumental. I am all for that instrumental. It's reminding me of some of like the Nujabe stuff from like the 2000s, you know, Mo Modal Soul 
or something like that, uh, stuff on that album. And then the vocals come in and some... S the vocals. Oh. This man invited Alvin and the Chipmunks to the studio for this one. I don't know, no, I don't know why, why he chose these vocals. It is just disgusting. And then you get past that point and you're just hitting those really plain, dull instrumentals once again. We are always alone. Um, is attempting to be this really somber piece because I guess it's just trying to depict this idea that yes we all have friends on social media I suppose but we are truly always alone so let's make a sad song about that uh, it, it's just not really engaging and I will say though that the second disc has some nice high points I won't lie I'm not gonna act like every track on this entire double disc 26 track album is a throwaway because I think that would be a lie. I think you'd be a bit too harsh on DJ Shadow to say that. I think the Run the Jewels feature is a good moment to be honest. I think LP and uh, Killer Mike usually bring something to the table that's worth listening to and this is no exception really. Um, one of the best instrumentals on the whole thing too. Um, you know, matching the one on If I Die Today, but at least this track doesn't have awful vocals ruining the whole thing. I have already mentioned the track with Samuel T. Herring, which I think is actually a really good track, just as a singular, random spot on the album, because if I'm being honest, like a few tracks on this side of the album, uh, it is very much our place. <laughs> There are so many weird out of place spots on this disc. I do not know what um, these choices were. It's a good instrumental. It's got that real like soft, sophisticated 80s pop type thing. But like, you know, you've got it surrounded by tracks from Run The Jewels, um, De La Soul, Pusha T. Like, why would you throw this here? I don't know. At least it's good, I guess. So I can't complain too much. And then the feature from Stowe which depicts this very, very grotesque and gross um, suicide story. Like, the detail this guy goes into is, is quite, quite heavy. Which, for me, I think is out of place again. I don't know if this subject matter quite fits in with the rest of the tracks here. I know some of these tracks already have quite a dark undertone to them already, but this one just goes completely into the abyss of darkness like I just don't know if this this is really really necessary for this part maybe if the maybe if the album ended on this one I think maybe that would have been a bit better because it would have just kind of like hit you in the face and you wouldn't be expecting it because the closing track again like is out of place on the album for me I think it just doesn't actually close off the album very well maybe this one I'm talking about here with Stowe could have been a bit better as a closer, I don't know. There are two tracks, two tracks with Dave East on it, titled Taxin. The first track, Taxin, just cuts off for some reason, and then you get Taxin later on on the album. And it's a fully fleshed out song with a Loyal Kana feature, which is lovely. I, I always like to hear Loyal Kana's voice. Dave East does a pretty great job, actually, on his verse. But I just don't know why there are two of them. Just get rid of the one that cuts off and have the one that's an actual full song. Is that, was that too hard? I don't, I don't know. I don't think it's too hard. I just came up with it off the top of my head in, in like 10 seconds. Come on, man. Why, why did you do this? I don't know. Maybe I'm being nitpicky. You guys probably always think I'm being nitpicky. I try not to be, but things like this just don't make sense to me at all. So I can't just not mention them. Like, why would you? I just don't get it. I do suppose another positive as well that I can mention here, though, is that some of these uh, tracks have features from artists um, that are lesser known. You probably don't recognize their names, so it is pretty cool to get like a fresh take on some new names that you may not have gotten without this album. It's a shame though because I don't really get much out of the features themselves to be honest. The instrumentals particularly just sound like they're leftovers from the 90s. Uh, DJ Shadow really sounding out of touch on this album in quite a few ways. The Rocket Fuel track is just inexcusable man and I know this is De La Soul, not exactly an up-and-coming name or anything, but this just honestly feels like it's just of the era that De La Soul came from, like the friggin corny lyrics that they're coming out with on this track, ugh. Can you rock it like rocket fuel, yeah, like ugh. The urgent, important, please read track just has even less 
exciting verses from a lot of the names on this one. Nothing impresses me here. The machines are gonna win, I'm a be the first to say it line. It's just like, what? You're not the first to say that. There are there are plenty of people that are worried about AI and the takeover of like robots and shit. You're not the first to say it. And the entire rhyme scheme of the second verse with like the rich getting richer and then the guy ends the bar with like, my bitch is thicker or whatever. It's like, th there's just no the links between each of the lines. It's so bad. Not particularly all that impressed from Nas either, but I think in 2019, that's to be expected nowadays, unfortunately. I think Pusha T sounds decent on his track though, I will say that at least. But you know, he's not really dropping anything too mind-blowing here. Um, he's just kind of coasting, I think. And I guess I'm just talking for the sake of talking now. There's so little to pick out of this album. Like, there's just really not much to, to to get out of this at all except for 90 minutes you're just sitting through this for 90 minutes it's just so unnecessary i can at least say that i don't hate it that much though like some people have come out of this album absolutely hating it um but i just think it's pretty bad to be honest uh, more than anything so 4.5 out of 10 um yeah i guess this review is probably all over the place and i do apologize for that but man this album was just so much of a slog that I, trying to comprehend so much of this was just difficult for me. Just the emptiness of that first disc and then the complete scattered second disc uh, really really just left uh, such a sour taste in my mouth but again I can at least say there were some good tracks that I enjoyed like I can't hate every moment here. Even the track Con Form I thought was pretty clever with some of the lyrics and stuff. So yeah, it's not like I, I, I left this album really, really hating it, which is good because it's 90 minutes and I think that would have just destroyed my soul. Do let me know your thoughts on this though. I'm interested to see what people think. Thank you for watching my review. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Have a good day. Tell me what I should review next. Goodbye. <laughs>